Humanity could not be manipulated and deceived without phantom self. It couldn't happen. Um, because what is phantom self? Um, we, we are uh, not even multidimensional. We're all dimensional beings. We are uh, a point of attention within all existence, the great infinite forever. Um, but if we have our perceptions um, programmed, manipulated um, into a sense of the five sense world alone, then we can um, cease to self-identify with infinite I and start to self-identify with little me. The, 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 if you said to almost anybody, who are you? They'd give you their name, they'd give you perhaps their job, they'd give you their, their country, they'd give you their religion, you know, whatever. How many would say I'm infinite awareness having an experience, having a human experience? No, very few would say that because that's not the way people self-identify. Why? Because from the earliest age, um, we're led to identify with the, the, the five sense world, to identify the experiences we're having with the nature of who we are. So, you know, it, when, you, when you look at the, a human life, unless you've got um, aware parents, from the moment you leave the womb, the programming of your sense of self-identity starts. And then, of course, it's hit by the education system, which is devastating, giving you the state's version of everything, including the, the state's version of you, scientific version of you i mean what does what is i mean what does science in in its in you know in its central mainstream nature say that we we we're, we're a cosmic accident um that have a few uh, years in some form of awareness and then cease to exist now what is that telling a child what is that telling an adult as they get older it's telling them that their experiences that they're currently having and these labels that we give to those experiences, like I am a, I am a this, I am a that, um, is who they are. Now, there's that great line, which is so true. Energy flows where attention goes. If you can get people to focus only on the five sense level of reality and only on their five sense level of self-identity, then you um, create such a focus of attention that you disconnect from an influence of your expanded awareness. It doesn't disconnect you from uh, uh, um, infinite awareness because we can't help being infinite awareness because that's what we are. But you can get disconnected from, it, from, a, um, from an influence of it. Um, there's a, um, a video on the internet I saw years ago, I'm sure it must still be there, where... Um, this video starts and there's uh, kind of basketball players throwing a ball around. And words come on the screen basically saying, um, count how many times the ball is thrown between, I don't know, the white team, words to that effect. And so people watch and they follow the ball. And then it ends and words come on the screen. It says, did you see the gorilla, right? Now, Virtually no one sees the gorilla. So what they do then is they play the same tape back. And while this ball's being thrown around, this um, person in a gorilla suit walks on to the middle, of the middle of the screen, looks around and walks off. Because the focus on the ball destroyed peripheral vision. And that's what this focus of the five senses does. And, you know, when spiritual people... I hear, I hear, I've heard them often over the years say you shouldn't go into this conspiracy stuff, it's negative and all that stuff. We must be spiritual. My question is, all right then, why aren't we? Why aren't we? Why, why don't people uh, um, in, in, in the great majority um, self-identify with being spirit having, uh, uh, and consciousness having an, having an experience. Why do they associate with the experience? Because there's a conspiracy to put them there. Because you cannot 
uh, manipulate and direct the lives of billions of people in a state of I am infinite awareness having an experience. You can't do it. Not least because that expansion of awareness makes you connect dots. You cannot, you cannot be deceived in the same way. You can't. It can't work. So they have to put us in phantom self mode for us to be, um, for us to be manipulated, for us to be controlled. And um, once you're in phantom self mode, you are in a sense of isolation. And that sense of isolation and groups of people who are in a state of isolation can be played off against other groups to divide and rule the target population. Those in infinite awareness know we're all one, so what are we fighting for? But that's not what it's like from the perception of phantom self. And then comes the question, well, what do we do about it? Well, first of all, we have to seek enlightenment, don't we? No, well, we don't. We don't. Um, this is the whole point. We are enlightened. The reason um, we get caught in phantom self um, are all these onion skins, layers of perception programming that we are put through from cradle to grave. I mean, look at it. You come out of the womb, you're influenced by your parents who've been through the system you're about to go through. You then, you then in, in a ridiculously short time, you're sitting in a, at a desk, uh, uh, being told about everything um, by a teacher that's representing the state, representing the system's version of everything, and woe betide the, the teacher if they don't, because they won't be a teacher very long. Um, and then you go to higher education, and professors basically tell you what to think. And then you go out into the world, and, and you look at the institutions of the world, um, from where the population gets its sense of reality from, uh, science, medicine, journalism, politics, you know, corporate, the corporate world. And people have entered those different expressions of this system, this structure, having been through this all their formative years, giving them a certain limited view of everything, including themselves. So they go out into these institutions, and now these institutions are confirming to each other, actually, you know, that, that core programming, what I call the um, postage stamp consensus, um, is true. So if you, if you have a journalist who wants to do a story on, um, on, on healing or health, he won't go to a, a healer who might have a, a tremend tremendous record of, of dealing with this subject he's talking about, no, no they'll go to a doctor and they'll get the song sheet. You want to talk about reality, go to a scientist and get the song sheet. Um, and, 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 and so if you, if you look at it, you've got this download of normal, this download of how things are, download of limitation actually. And then all the institutions, not least journalism, politics, all of it, then take the po their point of reference for everything from this download. And anyone that challenges the download, people who have accepted the download, then turn on them. You're mad. You're, you can't say that. That's ridiculous. You're dangerous. You're, all this stuff. And so uh, what, what then happens is people, even people that are starting to think, well, maybe there's more to know. They get, even if they keep it in their own mind, they're still, in terms of the way they express themselves, they stay within the norm because they don't, you know, they fear what other people think. And so it's a, it's, um, it's a program and it's a tyranny to enforce the program. Um, and therefore, um, and, and it is happening, I'm seeing it, it's happening, it's happening like never before on a scale that's never before and, and also touching the kinds of people I've never seen before. People, system people are now going, well, hold on a minute, maybe there is more to know. Um, and to, um, to break out of this perceptual straitjacket, people just have to stiffen the backbone and say, actually, I'm going to decide my reality, no one else. And if my mother, my father, my, um, my, the people at work, whatever, don't like it, well, they'll just have to do the other thing because I'm now going to decide my reality. Okay, I'm going to get a blank sheet of paper, symbolically or literally, and, and, and for my perceptions of reality and my perceptions of self to get on that piece of paper, they've got to go through my filter. I'm no longer just accepting them because somebody with letters after their name told me. I'm no longer accepting it just because everybody knows that. Well, everybody knows that because everyone's been through the same program. This is, this is how it works. 
you know, and, and, and so it's, it's this, this awakening. What is this awakening that people talk about? It's, it's simply a deletion of the perception programs that stopped us being what we are anyway, which is expanded awareness. Uh, so this is the thing, and, 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 and uh, if people um, want to continue to submit to the perceptual impositions of society and peer pressure and all this stuff, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change. Because, you know, I, I see people, they look at the conspiracy and they look at these the things that are going on and they say, we've got to fight, and, you know, we, we fight the enemy and fight for peace. I love that one. Um, but actually, the, the ultimate revolution and actually the only revolution that ever changed anything is a revolution of perception because from that everything comes. Uh, and um, see, if you have a perception that the system knows best, that just because someone calls himself a scientist, they must know what they're talking about. Well, thalidomide, hmm? knew best, what do you think? Um, and, and such things. Um, and that, you know, they're the government, they must know. They're journalists, they must know. They're doctors, they must know, and, and even funnier. Um, then, um, they're not going to change anything. What they need to do is 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 to is to is to realise that um, you know we have the ability and the right to decide our own perceptions, um, and that means not being lazy. It means not accepting the way things are just because that's what people accept the way things are. But actually, look at it, do some research, and 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 and, and when you when you take this postage stamp consensus of, of normal belief and you put it through that filter to see if it will get on that blank sheet of paper and earn its place, it's extraordinary. Virtually nothing earns, earns its place that we've been told from cradle to grave to believe in. So it's, um, it's a, perception, a perceptional revolution, not least the perception of the nature of self that will change everything because it is the program nature of those things that have put us where we are. We just need to remove the cause of the problem. Living in a third dimension, how did or do you recognize the phantom self? And how do you cope with this uh, to transform it in, in your daily situation? Um, well, <laughs> it's another area. I, I don't, see, I don't think we, we live in this is a slightly different question. I don't think we live in the five sense world. I think the five sense world is a source of information we decode into a world we think we live in. Um, but it's, um, it's just something you, be you become more aware of. I if you go through life unconsciously just reacting, um, reacting to program, reacting to, to the download of perception, then um, it's very much like um, someone sitting at a computer at a desk and that someone with the mouse and the keyboard is expanded awareness and the computer is five sense body mind. Now when the two are working together, we're all right here. We've got different perspectives and, and, and we've got the uh, more expanded uh, view of what's happening. But when the computer takes over, say with a virus, and the computer then is not responding to the mouse and the keyboard, but is going its own way, um, then uh, there's not a lot you can do uh, because you, you actually become a software program which is constantly reacting to some, well, perceptual uh, um, expression of someone pressing enter all the time. React, react, right, react. When you become more conscious, and, and, it, and uh, it's, it's not this great, oh, I've got to become more conscious. It's so, it, it's not, it, we are, we're talking about just, just moving into our natural state. You've got, the, you've got the body reactions, but once you become even a little bit conscious beyond body mind, you, you, you reach that point where you can observe body-mind reactions. Instead of being them, being of it and in it and of it, 
you're starting to observe it. So you can pull yourself back. And of course, the way the world's structured, um, all the time we're facing situations that pull us into phantom self. All the time. But, you know, my experience is, and it's a constant thing to do, is that once you, be, once you become even a touch more an observer of yourself or what you think is yourself, then you can start to pull yourself back. It doesn't mean you won't get pulled into a reaction, but, but, but pretty soon you'll... St ah, been pulled in again, been pulled in again, illusion, been pulled in again. And then, and, then, and then you pull yourself back, you pull yourself back, you pull yourself back, and eventually you don't go there at all. I'm not saying I'm there yet, but, but um, the, the, you, you get a point where you don't get there at all because it's no longer part of you. You, you are the observer as well as the experiencer, and the experiencer is, and the observer become one, one, um, one uh, um, seamless uh, unit. And, and, and very much for me, not just symbolically, but, but literally within this world, that, that unity of the observer and the experiencer comes from the heart and the head and, and, and the emotions becoming, becoming one. I've, I've, I found it very interesting to, to read that um, it, there's an organization in America, I've, I've, I've read quite a bit about here and there over the years, called the Heart Math Institute which um, looks at the power of the heart, the electromagnetic heart, the energetic heart, what people in the East call the heart chakra and that. And, that. Um, and, and one of the things they say they found in their studies um, is that when um, the energetic field of the, of the head, the brain, the energetic field of the heart, which is the most powerful, and, uh, powerful they say, electromagnetic field in the body, and the central nervous system are in what they call energetic coherence, in other words, harmony. People move into a higher level of awareness. And, and when that, that coherence, harmony is broken, then they go into a lower level of awareness. And if you look at, um, if you look at the way society is structured, people are, are constantly being triggered and poked to, to drop into um, imbalanced, particularly emotional states, which break that coherence and hold us, hold us down. And one of, the, um, one of the things about just starting to go into a sense of observing body-mind rather than being a completely it is you start to get a perspective on what matters and what doesn't, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's funny, you know, I, I have this, this, this thing I call the, uh, the, 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 the deathbed revelation. If you were on your deathbed and you had 10 minutes to live, um, someone said to you, okay, um, looking back, uh, what mattered? All the things that wind us up, that cause conflict, that cause emotional trauma of um, resentment and, and what have you, um, none of them would be important. None of them would be important. The simple things would be important. How much I loved, how much I was loved, um, all those things. Um, and if, we, if, if you then said to, 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 to that person, well, actually, I was killing you. You haven't got 10 minutes to live. But uh, actually, for the rest of our life, however long you've got, how about coming from the perspective you just come from? And, and, and looking at, I see, I, I've read a lot of near-death experiences who've, who've been out of the body and, and seen reality in a much more expanded way beyond this focus that this body does, focuses our attention, a very narrow frequency of reality. And when they come back, um, invariably, um, things that were important before are no longer important. Things that wound them up before and don't wind them up anymore, because it doesn't matter. It's just an experience. And so it, if we can become an observer of our, not even actions, but our reactions, which is basically what emotion does, then... Um, we can start getting control of those reactions and therefore um, have more expanded awareness um, imp I imposing itself on our um, human behavior instead of just the body mind, if you like, computer level, experiencing level of it. And if we did that in enough numbers, the world would change dramatically. You know, um, you know it's like, um,
Things like road rage are, are, are an extreme version of what I'm talking about, where people react to something and completely freaking lose it. And, and how often do people do things like that and then go, what was I doing? What was I doing? I was crazy to do that. What was I doing? And it's because the body, mind, computer reaction had overridden consciousness. When consciousness has a chance to reflect, it goes, oh my God, what was I doing? Um, it's, it's getting into that what was I doing mode when it happens, not afterwards. Synchronicity is a miracle in itself. To my knowledge, one can only recognize these uh, so-called hidden personal messages provided that we regain confidence in our higher selves. Isn't this sort of mission impossible for a lot of people? Um, nothing's impossible. What's, what makes it apparently impossible is people's sense that it's impossible impossible or, or um, very difficult. Uh, if, um, if I look back at my life um, and I went through a massive initial awakening consciously in 1990, from that moment my, my, the synchronicity of my life, which had always been quite, I'd call it synchronicity, I used to call it coincidence. Well not a coincidence, lots of coincidences happened in my life. You know, I mean, I, 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 I started out as a footballer and then went through um, uh, being a, a newspaper journalist and a, a, a radio journalist, a television journalist, a national spokesman for the British Green Party. And, and these, th the, the synchronicities that made that happen, the, the coincidences, the bits of luck, were extraordinary. But once I'd had this awakening in 1990, it became ridiculous. You know, I've written all these books. I've put all this information together over 26 years. Um, I'd probably be on, be on, I'd probably, what have I written? Over the years, probably about the best part of 20 books. I'd have probably be on book three or four by now without synchronicity. Synchronicity has been extraordinary. It's, it's led me to people. Um, to, um, or it's led people to me, it's led me to experiences, it's led me to documents, it's led me to books um, uh, uh, that, um, that have given me the puzzle pieces. Yeah, wow. Without that synchronicity, I couldn't have done what I've done. I mean, if, if, if I'd have thought, okay, I'm going to uncover this now, and I went in search of uncovering it, forget it. Forget it. The reason you can uncover it is because some force is bringing the pieces to you. Uh, and without that, you couldn't, you couldn't do it, not on any level. So why is it that you, you, you become more synchronistic? Well, there seems to be a law of physics that the more, the more you expand your awareness, the higher your frequency, and the higher the frequency, the more information you can process, you can filter, you can work with. So when, when you're in little me, I've got no power mode, then you're in a low frequency state, not because you're worse than anyone else or you're a failure, but just, 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 reflecting, your, um, it's just reflecting your state of being. And, and therefore, you, you, the amount of, in, of information, which is what energy is, is, you can process is very little. When you expand your awareness, and anyone can do it, then you're processing more information. And this processing more information um, uh, makes you much more open to synchronicity because you, your, your, your energetic field can attach to, to more fields for a start, but it can attach to, to higher fields and it can draw them into, you can draw them in and, 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 and we draw these fields in and we call them people, documents, experiences, etc. And we say, whoa, what, an ex what, what a coincidence, fancy meeting you here. Well, actually, um, what if they were an energetic field and you were an energetic field? And actually it's the attraction of the energetic fields that have created what appears to be a, a coincidence in the world of, of the, the holographic world of the illusory physical, as I would call it. And actually it's not an accident or a coincidence, you've drawn it to you. This is why when people say, okay, what I want to do now, I, 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 I want to break out of the program, I, I, want, to, I want to be the, the true magnitude of who I am. And, and if you really mean it, it's not just words, you mean it, you have that intent. That intent um, draws to you 
energetic fields called people, places, locations, ways of life, experiences, bits of luck, um, that, re that, 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 that um, have attached to you because they're attached to your intent. And what you bring towards you is what you need to achieve that intent. And as I say in the talks, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's people you'd rather not have in your life. But your intent is that you, um, you, you, you want to be your true self. You're, okay, so why aren't you your true self? Well, because of all these layers of programming, perception programming, and, and, and this, that, and the other. Okay, so what that intent is going to do, it's going to bring to you the experiences you need to delete that stuff so you, you achieve your intent. And, and it can be a, a challenging time, and people can say, oh dear, if this is spirituality, you can stick it. I don't like this. But if you keep with it, um, you come out the other side with your intent, um, your intent a, 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 a achieved. Uh, so, um, you know, what we put out and, and, and pull towards us is constantly dictated by our state of being, by our intent, by... Um, the nature of what we put out, we get back. I call it uh, vibrational magnetism, for want of a phrase. Um, and this is why um, the, the more um, you, 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 you open, when I talk about span, expand your awareness, the more you open your perceptions to greater possibility. Oh no, this is how it is. Well, may, well, well may, maybe, maybe there are other ways of looking at it. What's happening? You're expanding your awareness uh, by saying, well, I'm, I'm, I'm open to looking at it in another way. It's happening already. And then your frequency is increasing. Then you start to attach to different energy fields. Now suddenly what, what you were pulling in before, this type of person, that type of experience, that type of opportunity or lack of it, now you're pulling in something else here and your life's starting to change. And you think, oh, I've got this synchronicity in my life. What's just happened? Well, that's just happened. That's why it's happened. Um, and it, it, it's this appreciation that the power over our lives is always with us. And this manipulation of perception is in effect a hijack of that power. If, if I have a certain perception, I will create a certain reality. If something externally hijacks that perception, I will still create the reality, but it's a reality coming from an externally downloaded perception which would be different without the download. So this is where the education system and the, the media and peer pressure, this is where it all comes from. This is where the blank sheet of paper is so important. If you say to people, you know, tell me what you believe, tell me what you believe, tell me how you think things are. Okay, well, let's go through them one by one. Where did that come from? It will be almost certainly, not every time, but almost certainly, it will be an external source. And you go, okay, well, how do you know that external source was right? And then you see the, you see the kind of, well, actually, I, I don't really know. Uh, exactly, now go through all of them. And you realize that what you've done is you've taken your perceptions from external sources of information, you've created a construct you call, this is how I see things, which is not how you see things, it's how you've um, externally accepted uh, yourself to see things. And that perception of how you see things will draw to you an expression of that state of perception. In other words, if you can download, download someone's perceptions, you will dictate the life they live. You will dictate the opportunities they have or don't have. This is, this is, how, it, um, this is how it works. And, and, and uh, therefore, the great news from all this is we have the power. We just have to say, hold on, I'm deciding my perceptions from now on. Never mind what's gone before. Never mind what you said. I'm deciding them, right? And then we can create a reality that reflects the true self rather than someone else's version of what we should be. And if enough people do that, the world changes. Because the world is as it is because people have accepted the download and they're living the life individually and collectively that suits that which made the download in the first place. The only revolution that's going to change anything is a revolution of perception. And that's the revolution that's starting to happen. The stirring. The stirring has started. The stirring has started. And uh, the next five to ten years are going to be amazing. 
because um, the stirring is going to become a tidal wave. Thank you very much. I saw you um, made this heart shape all the time. Did I? <laughs> Did you notice? I didn't know. I love it. It's beautiful. No. So I would say... Body language. Continue. Continue <laughs> and go on. Keep Thank on you, the good I will. work. Thank you. Thanks for it. We love you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>